Thank you so much for joining me in business planning today. This is going to be a condensed version of a two hour continuing education course that I teach here on a local level. Uh, super excited for you to be here because one of the reasons I developed this course in speaking with a lot of agents throughout the country, I've noticed that, you know, real estate agents get into the industry, um, you know, to own their life, right, for financial freedom, to better their life for themselves and their family. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot of us are not treating it truly like a business and we haven't taken time to actually put our business plan down to pen and paper so i hope by the end of this we're going to have an exact plan on what you're able to do uh, within the next 12 months so really really excited and i uh, would love to hear your progress as you walk through your own business plan just a little bit about me. I am a second generation real estate investor. I'm also a broker associate with eXp Realty. Um, I'm recording this video in November 2019, so I've been with eXp for a little over five years, agent number 333, and was able to witness the company go pretty much from a startup to enterprise and the growth that we've had uh, today. So very, very exciting. I'm very blessed to have been with the company and I've truly learned a lot. I'm also a co owner of OKC Home Investments with my husband where we hold properties, we flip a lot of single family, we hold single family, and we also do some commercial and apartments as well. And through our experience with that, we've developed an Embrace Your Fear coaching program. Fear is a formula that we created. It's standing for financial equity acquisition and results. And luckily we have been able to flip hundreds of properties and knock on wood to date. We have never lost on a deal. So this is a formula that we created to help others do the same. We also uh, are part of a program called Philanthro Investor. And what we do is purchase properties throughout the US and then sell them back under market values to those that can't get traditional financing and basically become a lender over the course of 20 years. So it's very rewarding being able to do that. And again, we wanna help other real estate agents do the same. So through our coaching program and the book that we've written, uh, The Real Estate investing formula, we show you how we've turned our initial $25,000 investment into a multi-million dollar portfolio in less than five years. It's It's been quite a ride, but I'm excited to see what the future may hold. Also, uh, I've lead generated a lot in uh, the 10 years that I've been licensed. Um, I've run a team and really built my business through online, you know, creating relationships online, and then of course, uh, through online lead generation and social platforms. Married, as I mentioned, mother of two wonderful boys, and uh, they are my why. So we're gonna talk about developing your why here later on, but um, they are certainly why I do what I do. Um, we wanna ensure that we're building wealth uh, for our family, just for really financial security to ensure that we can face any situation. Uh, our youngest in particular has, um, faced some medical challenges in his early years and, and still does to date. And uh, that has really lit a fire in us to be able to provide for him and make sure, you know, all of his medical bills and, and you know, his future is going to be bright. So um, we want to help you do the same. And that's really what our passion is to help real estate agents increase productivity, increase their passive and residual income and develop wealth for themselves. So we're going to play just a short video. Mental toughness, or what I call extreme vision, is a lot different than motivation. So if I said right now, everybody in here, we're all going to run a half marathon in five days. And we all go, yeah, we're getting fired up. I said, yeah, we're going to start tomorrow at 5 a.m. We leave. 5 a.m. comes. It's dark. It's cold, our bed is comfortable. It's hard to get motivated at five in the morning. And maybe you do it one day, but again, and again, and again. That is the x-ray vision. It's that mental toughness that says, you know what, I don't care that it's dark, wet, windy, cold. I'm gonna go anyway. You got to train your brain by doing things that make you uncomfortable consistently to build this mindset that when things get hard, which they will be, we don't shy away, we don't quit, we attack 
I'm seeing through all those walls. I'm getting to where I want to go. The only way to increase your mental toughness is like a muscle is to do things that make you uncomfortable. When you do things that stink every day, they might be making extra calls, they might be staying in late at work, whatever it is, little things, you take your baseline from a five and you can make it a six. And once it goes up, it never goes back down. You never go back down. It's all about taking your baseline that you operate on and raising it and challenging yourself and pushing yourself. How you do anything is how you do everything. It's those little things, the little decisions that you make every single day, as small as it seems, that create an environment in your head of what it is you're becoming. Are you a finisher, a quitter, what are you? How you do anything is how you do everything. Remember tomorrow. When you have a split second decision that you have to make or whatever, remember how that decision is gonna make you feel tomorrow. You wanna drop out of the marathon at mile 18? Fine. How are you gonna feel tomorrow when someone says, how'd you do? A quitter? I didn't finish my journey. Lazy? It's okay to not finish what you start. Think about how your decision is gonna make you feel the next day and watch what happens. The foundation of that is your daily habits. It's creating winning habits, winning routines, and a winning mindset. That's the formula. It's all about getting comfortable being uncomfortable. And that is what gives you freedom. Wow. Um, <laughs> I hope you're as motivated as I am right now. So I like to play that video in the beginning because I want to make sure you are here for the right reasons um, because a lot of us have goals and ambition, but unfortunately we don't follow through with it. So, you know, we have to take action on our dreams, on our goals. Otherwise, that's all that they are. So I want you to get out a piece of paper and a pen, and, and I'm just going to give you just a second here, and ask yourself, am I a downer, a dreamer, or a doer? So have you always had some of those negative people in your life? Uh, it doesn't matter what's going on, but they tend to have a negative outlook on everything. Um, I hope you know those people. If you don't, you might want to look into the mirror. Totally kidding. Um, dreamers, dreamers have good intentions. And unfortunately, this is where a lot of us fall. We have good intentions, but we rarely fall through with it. And the doers, I love the doers. So do doers create their own paycheck, right? So they are actually taking action on their goals and they are fulfilling those goals. Now, I want you to keep in mind that you can vary from day to day on being a downer, dreamer, or doer. You know, the best of us are always going to, to vary, but I want you to take a second, write where you are today, and then write where you would like to be. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of us have not taken time to truly treat real estate like the business that it is. I mean, if you were going to go open a store in the mall, then you would have to come up with a business plan, right? So why is real estate any different? Or if you are going to drive across country, then you would need a map. A lot of us would not just go get in the car and just start driving and not know where we're going. So I say map, you know, of course we've got GPS these days, but, um, you know, you wouldn't drive across country without a map. So why would you do the same with your business? I want you to truly think about that. But when you map out your business, also allow for detours, just as if you were gonna drive across country, there's going to be detours. Things are gonna happen that are unexpected. So when that happens in your business, 
I don't want that to stall you. I need you to, to figure out what your next step is going to be and then continue to take action. Because when we get stalled on those detours and unexpected events that happen in our life, that can really push us months behind. So I need you to go ahead and plan out using your business plan exactly what your next 12 months are going to look like. And keep in mind, we become what we think about. So everything that you are feeding your brain right now, um, you know, intentionally or unintentionally, this is what you're going to become. Uh, I'll tell you, I was at a John Maxwell training in Orlando a few months ago, and I knew how, you know, important um, your subconscious is, but I didn't know to, to what degree. And, you know, they put up a slide that 95% of our decision making actually comes from our subconscious. So the things that we are constantly feeding ourselves, this is what's going to happen. And, um, you know, it's, it's just really important that I, I like to call it head trash. We have to cut out the head trash in our lives. And that may be, you know, watching too much news or, or watching too much TV or, you know, listening to radio, you know, why not turn your car environment into a mobile library instead and really feed your brain on a constant level of what you want to succeed. So necessary tools, I mean, of course, this day and age, you have to have a smartphone, you know, everything is on the go. So if, uh, you know, you are not super techie, then I would just encourage you to learn as much as you can and really utilize some of the resources that are out there. You have to have a website these days. I mean, just as I mentioned, everybody's online, everybody's on their s smartphone. So if you don't have a competitive website, and to take it a step further, a competitive website that is mobile friendly, then I would argue you may not be in business much longer. So you have to stay up with the trends and constantly be evaluating that website to be in touch with what the market is uh, providing because that's where that's where buyers are going these days. And of course, on your website, you should have an IDX, which is an internet data exchange. This is going to pull the MLS feed to your website where buyers can go on and search for homes. Now, the point of a website is to be able to capture leads, of course. So on the back end, you need to have some kind of database, some kind of CRM, that's a client's relations management system. This is going to be where you house all of the leads. This is where you're going to house your new leads, your past clients, your warm leads, everyone that you are working with, everyone in your sphere that you know, you need a place to house those. And I'm often asked, what is the best CRM? Um, Honestly, it's the one it's the one that you use. So there's a lot of great products out there. I personally use KV Core, which is a fantastic lead generation platform uh, that we're actually provided at EXP Realty, and uh, I could not be more happy with it. And you have to have a goal setting worksheet. So uh, at the end of this video, uh, on the website, you're going to be able to download a goal planning. PDF. This needs to be just a one page document. It's nothing that needs to be, you know, crazy in depth. My whole point of this is it's a one page document that you can literally have on your desk and be able to glance at it at any given moment. I hope you're looking at it actually every day and be able to make sure that you're on track. I don't need you to write a novel um, that you're never going to look at again. And then you need an expenditure tracker. So this is going to be for personal and business. It amazes me how many agents don't look at their fi financials. They don't look at how much money they need on a personal and then how much money is going in and out for their business. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. And of course, in your database, in your CRM, you need to have a drip campaign. How are you going to follow up with your leads? So there's a lot of time we're out, you know, we're out uh, at appointment and a lead comes in and we're not able to immediately follow up with them. And we all know that's where the gold is. The gold is in the follow up. The fortune is in the follow up, as they say. And you want to get in touch with those leads as quickly as possible. So if you're not able to immediately get in touch with them, then you need some kind of drip campaign that's going to stay in front of your leads and text and email and drip on them as you will on your behalf. So profit and loss, do you have a PL statement? 
I would argue a lot of us don't. And that is the first place I want you to start after you finish your business plan. And better yet, I actually want you to write what your average income is in a 30 day period, write a blank check. I don't care who you write it to. Uh, you could even write it to a charity if you'd like. And in the next 30 days, if you don't have a PL completed, then you have to give that person the check. And I promise you, you will make sure that you get it done as quickly as possible. So just going to go over some definitions. Uh, GCI is your gross commission income. This is going to be the total commission paid to you by representing a client. So only for example, if you have a $200,000 home and the gross the percentage is three percent then your gross commission income is going to be the six thousand dollars now cost of sale so we're going to dive it down deeper monies that you pay out to transact the sale okay this is something that we often don't think about this could be referral fees relocation fees your brokerage split or transaction fees or if you're on a team your team split how much is it costing you to actually transact that sale. And then operating expenses. These are gonna be costs associated with operating your business. Monthly dues, if you have them, you know, franchise fees, office fees, license fees, marketing, MLS fees, advertising, supplies, gas, salaries, etc. What is it costing you to operate your business? We need to have all those numbers lined out. So your net income is going to be your GCI minus your cost sales minus operating expenses. So your GCI is your gross commission income that we talked about minus the cost of sales. That could be your broker split or referral fee minus your operating expenses. How much does it cost you to transact that sale? And that is going to equal your net income. Then we need to look at your closing ratio. This is the number of actual transactions divided by the number of possible transactions. Okay, so if you're going on 100 listing appointments, let's say, just for the sake of example, and you're closing actually 20 of them, then you might need to reevaluate your listing presentation and how you're conducting your business because your closing ratio maybe on the lower end. So how many appointments are you going on versus how many are you actually closing? Personal income is the amount you took home to your household. So, you know, unfortunately in this day and age, we are so caught up in numbers. We are so caught up in the numbers that the MLS shows and how many millions of dollars that we've sold. I can tell you, I could probably care less about those numbers. What I care about is your net income and your personal income, how much you are actually providing for your family. And then in turn, being able to, you know, turn that money and develop wealth for yourself. So I have often seen large teams scale back and they become more profitable. So even if you're running a team, I want you to look at, or a brokerage for that matter, I've even talked to broker owners, I want you to look at how much are you actually bringing home to your household, okay? And then we've got after-tax income, the good old Uncle Sam. We've got our personal income and then we subtract the taxes. So it goes down even further. So again, when we're so caught up on how many millions of dollars that we've sold, we are not looking at what we've netted, what we've brought home, and then what is really we're taking home after taxes. Closed volume, like I talked about, that's going to be, um, you know, the percentage or the number rather of the value of homes sold within the year. Now, this is important, but this is not what I want us to pay attention to. And unfortunately, this is where a lot of real estate agents get caught up. So where do you start? We're going to create the one page business plan. We're going to create a lead generation plan. This is going to be both online and offline. Uh, I love online lead generation. I'm, you know, pretty much a fan of it. Um, but you have to be belly to belly with people as well. You've got to be out networking. You've got to, you know, stay top of mind and be building those relationships. And then you need to create a hiring plan. What leverage will I need? And what is my hourly worth? A lot of us don't take the time in actually knowing how much we are worth 
on an hourly basis. And I promise you, when you do that, and I didn't do this for years, uh, but once I knew my hourly worth, it was a lot easier to start saying no uh, to clients or start saying no to appointments that I didn't want to go on because I started to question, is it worth X amount of money? So when you start dealing with some needy clients or clients that you may or may not ever get paid on, you really need to evaluate how much that is costing you. And I promise saying no is going to become a lot easier. And what is your budget? So you need to have a marketing spend. I used the example earlier of opening a store at the mall. Just as if you were going to open a store, you need to have inventory. And this is no different. You need to be reinvesting back in your business, but typically no more than 10% of your gross commission income. We need to be tracking that because if we don't, it's very easy to start spending a ton of money and then we don't know where it went. So I want you to look at your past sales. You really need to come up with a production plan. And what I'm gonna show you is, we're gonna dive down into a niche where we're no longer in competition with everybody. You know exactly where your business is coming from. And the way to do that is looking through your past sales, right? So when you look at your past sales, you may see you know, leads and business coming from something that you didn't ever expect and then you can really start to nurture those relationships closing ratio you need to look at how many appointments you've had versus your closed sales and this will tell you where you need to tweak your business what is your average sales price what is your bread and butter so of course we all love you know the higher pr price point listings that's awesome but if they are not the ones that are currently selling quickly in the market, then you need to look at what your average price point is and maybe adjust to the bread and butter that is selling quickly, right? So for example, if you have $2 million in gross volume divided by 10 transactions and your average sales price is $200,000, give or take. And then what is your average commission? Are you a full service agent or are you giving a discount? So again, when we're so focused on the for example, $2 million in gross volume, but we might be discounting our services, then we may not be taking home as much as what we originally thought. So that is exactly why I don't like us getting caught up in that number. So let's say, for example, our net income goal was $200,000, okay? We wanna bring home, after all of our expenses, $200,000. Well, you have your operating expenses are gonna be 25,000, your cost of sales, 20,000, and of course this is gonna vary with every real estate brokerage and how your business is set up. And then we put just a miscellaneous buffer of $5,000. So in reality, your gross commission needed is $250,000. Now in the sake of this example, it actually needs to be higher because I didn't put any reserves or taxes. So uh, we need to make a lot more than what we initially think. So back to the original example, if our average sales price is $200,000, and of course this is gonna vary on the market that you're in, times you know 3%, if that's gonna be what we're going to charge, then for example, that would be a $6,000 commission, right? So if we divide that, then we know that we need 41.6 transactions in a year to be able to gross the $250,000. Okay, so my closing ratio, how many appointments do I need to close to make 42 transactions? I know that in order to hit my goal, I need approximately 42 transactions. So let's say my closing ratio is two to one. So I'm going on 84 appointments to close the 42 transactions, right? So not too bad. There's 52 weeks in a year, take off two weeks for vacation. This is really not even considering um, holidays. So that's 50 weeks. Then I know I need 1.68 appointments every week. So one to two good appointments every week. Not so bad. So now we've really divided down how many, what we want to make for the year, what we want to net, how many appointments it's going to take, and then how many appointments we need to go on every single week. So when you have divided it out like that, it's no longer this big, hairy, audacious goal and we don't know how to get there. We know exactly what we need to do to stay on point to make sure that we hit those goals.
Okay, so now we know we need to go on one to two appointments every week. How many calls do I need to make to get two appointments per week? Okay, so now we know what we need to do per week. I want you to create daily goals to be able to ensure that you're hitting those appointments. So I created this formula and developing an ebook of life is a business. And if you think of life, I've broken it down into learn, implement, focus, follow up, and execute. Now, a lot of us think that we get stuck in the execution. I would argue that we get stuck in the, what I call the if, the implementation and the focus and the follow up. So learning is easy. You're sitting here watching the webinar right now. It's not too difficult, right? And typically, unless some, a problem arises, going to closing and getting your commission check is not too difficult. So the execution is not hard, right? But where we get stuck, just as you saw in the video, is the constant implementation and the focus and the follow-up. And that's exactly why it's very important to know exactly what you're going to do every single day. Because if you have your business plan on your desk and you're meeting those goals every day, then it will be just a habit and you've created that consistency. I love the book, uh, The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. He talks about, you know, little consistent measurements every day will, you know, all of a sudden look like an, an overnight success. So I've made it a point every single day to accomplish something, whether it's big or small, some days it's larger than others. But before I go to sleep for the day, I want to make sure that I have been able to accomplish something. And when you do this, you realize where your time wasters are. And one of the things that I would recommend is actually getting a piece of paper and writing down what your goals are for the day. Draw a line, vertical line down the sheet, and then on, at the end of the day, write down what you actually accomplished. Compare it and see where the gaps are and where you're wasting time. And maybe, you know, some of those calls or emails that you should have said no to, to be able to ensure that you're staying on track. So sources of business, you know, you can do your traditional lead cultivating. That could be your sphere of influence for sale by owners, door knocking, expireds, mailers, affiliates, etc. The list goes on and on. I mean, there is not a right or wrong. What I want you to do is really hone in on just a few because there's a lot of shining objects in real estate. And I, I want you just to pick a few and focus on those because when we're focusing on a million different things, what happens is we're not we end up not getting anything done, right? Or you could, maybe your digital marketer, and uh, they always say the best marketer wins. So that could be Facebook, Craigslist, LinkedIn, Google AdWords. Uh, maybe you purchase leads from ZillowRealtor.com. I don't care what it is. Do what works for you. And that is different for everybody. So one of the ways that you can do that is again, look at your past production, but also look at your life. What are some of the things that you do on a daily basis and incorporate that in your business. So uh, I mentioned having two boys and there have been years that I've been the homeroom mom. Well, I leveraged that and, you know, sent out the class emails with my, um, you know, EXP email signature. Actually, just today, one of my son's old teachers um, is asking me to list her house. So I incorporate things that I'm already doing every day in my business. A good friend of mine and another EXP agent, Jean Frederick, has a book out there, 101 Ways to Lead Generate. Absolutely amazing, highly recommended. I think you can get it on Amazon. But one of the things he teaches is, look at these 101 ways to lead generate and then pick three or four buckets and that's it. Focus on those buckets. So again, when we know what our hourly worth is and we know what we need to be accomplishing every single day and every single week to hit our goals, then when you have three or four buckets on how you're going to generate your business, if something doesn't fit into one of those buckets, then again, it becomes easier to say no and be able to move on much quicker. I also want you to create strategic partnerships, so quality versus quantity. If you mention, or if you, if you remember, I said sphere of influence, we all hear that in real estate, but I would argue, start with your sphere of influence, but then you know, what is sphere of influence? It's our friends, family, people closest to us, right? But is that always who wants to truly see us succeed? 
A lot of times, unfortunately, the answer is no. So I want you to do what's called sphere of power. This is a term that I've coined that sphere of power. These are the people that truly want to see you succeed. Uh, you know, for, for me, they want it, they, you know, when they hear real estate, they are going to be like, oh my gosh, Micah is the best realtor in the world. You can't use anybody else. They are going to be your cheerleaders. Who are your cheerleaders? We may have a hundred sphere of influence, but I would rather you have 10 sphere of power that you can stay in touch with, stay top of mind and create value for their business as well. Always remember that what you get, you need to return. So constantly lead with value. And then again, uh, I have the, the um, webinar. So let me know if you'd like to, to watch it, how to generate 100 leads in 10 days. These are things, uh, lead generation things that I did and it's a proven formula, both online and offline activities. So create a database for your sources of business. So not only do you need to have a database, but you need to know where your business is coming from. And this is purely just an example. So let's say 10% of your business comes from your sphere of influence. 20% comes from your sphere of power. 10% referrals. 30% prospecting and new leads. 5% seminars and workshops, and then 25 for paid internet leads, okay? So when you have this written down and you know exactly where your business is coming from and you're tracking it, then where is your time best spent? So when I look at this and I see, well, seminars and workshops is only 5% of my business. So maybe I need to put that time into prospecting and being belly to belly with maybe local business owners and increase that 30 to 35% or more, right? Now we talked about niche. So I want you to determine your ideal client. This is going to be your client avatar. And what happens is when you do this, you are no longer in competition with anybody else. I don't care how many thousands of real estate agents you have in your market. When you have determined your ideal client, because I promise you nobody else is doing this. When you've determined your ideal client, then you are no, no longer competing. You're dominating. Okay. They also call this the blue ocean strategy. So when you think of the blue ocean, the sh that's where the sharks are. They're not out with all the other fish. You want to be Everybody's going one direction. You want to look at that and go the other way. So what is your niche? How do you find that out? Where does your business currently come from? So if you are already in production, look at the sources of your business and that's where you can tell what type of client you already have. Um, for example, I'm, I'm really good friends with um, the VP of sales for a, a local um, home building company. And when she created her client avatar, she noticed that because they build these homes on kind of an economic scale, that, you know, their, their niche really became homeschool families. Um, they often did kind of rural areas with a lot of big bonus rooms and, and more square footage. And so homeschool families uh, became their niche. And so when you define that, she's no longer competing with all the other home builders in the metro area. Okay. So once you've defined that, that's, you know, if you're an experienced agent, then you're going to look at your past business. If you're a brand new agent, I want you to look at your life and figure out how you can incorporate your business into things and activities that you're already doing. We're not here to change our life because remember personal goals have to align with your professional goals. If your personal goals don't align with your professional goals, then we're going to see them start going head to head and you may not even realize it until you're, you know, burn out and it's could be creating li uh, issues for you on a personal level. So they need to align. Once you have defined what kind, who your ideal client is, what problem do you solve for them? Okay. So once you know what problem you solve for them and how you specialize in helping them, then that's where you're going to target your marketing and you're no longer running with the rest of the pack. You become the known expert for that type of individual, right? Not saying we're not going to take any other client, but we're really narrowing down who and what we want to work with. Tracking your leads, leads are as good as the one converting them. 
If you are looking at, you know, your closing ratio or you're generating a lot of leads, but you're not closing any of them, then you need to really look at your scripting and maybe take some courses on how to convert them because leads are also as good as the one that is actually converting them. We have to look at leads as a funnel and our goal is to get them to the closing table. So how are you gonna track your leads? What methods will you follow up? The average is eight touches. Most of us stop after two. So if we're stopping after two, we've pretty much just thrown all that money away and the, the again the fortune is in the follow-up you need to come up with a follow-up plan do you have a drip campaign customized text emails to work on your behalf while you're sleeping or while you're out on appointment how are you going to stay top of mind to your leads and all of your past clients if a phone number is left call immediately okay if they don't answer leave a voicemail and better yet, follow up with a video text introducing yourself. I don't care what you look like. Put your phone, get over yourself, <laughs> and record a short, customized video and send it to your client. So if I had Sally just came in as a lead, she didn't answer the phone, I would record a short video and say, hey, Sally, this is Micah with EXP. I saw that you were just inquiring about a property. I wanted you to be able to put a face with the name and introduce myself. I look forward to talking to you soon, right? Short and sweet. We don't want it to sell, sound too salesy. We want to lead with value and always show that we care. So standing out from the crowd, like I said, we're going to define who we want to work with. Real estate is a very competitive market. How are you going to stand out? Stop doing what everybody else is doing. If you're going after for sell by owners and expireds, then don't just call them. That's what everybody else is doing. Come up with a, a creative campaign. Go, you know, show up in the evening with a for sale or sold um, writer with maybe a little packet. Do something that nobody else is doing and you will stand out from the crowd. Let your personality shine through all your marketing. Look at your branding, your marketing. Sh show them who you are um, and you're not just another real estate agent because there's a lot of real estate agents out there. So you need to let your personality shine and so those that want to work with you are going to be able to connect with you. I mentioned it earlier. I'll mention it again. The best marketer wins. You've got to put your time and energy and education into better marketing yourself and your business. Look where everyone else is going and then do the opposite, right? Don't follow the pack because if you do, then you're not going to stand out and you're going to find yourself struggling in your business. So again, we're going to look at our sphere of power. Those are your own personal cheerleaders. If you want to tap into farming, it's a great way to grow business, but you're going to have to send mailers to your neighborhood probably 12 times a year, your neighborhood or whatever area you decide to farm. This is not something that you can do just for a very short period of time and then just um, stop doing it and expect a return. Uh, I know a, a team of ours that is very successful at this. You know, they deliver pumpkins to their um, sphere and their past clients, you know, around the fall time. They do pictures with Santa, Christmas party. There's all kinds of things that you can do that it doesn't sound salesy. You're building a relationship and showing that you care. And then online, I want you to create a social powerball. So you're going to build an audience on about two to three social media platforms. We don't need to become an expert on them all, um, but just pick the few that you want to really focus on. And then you want to have those strategic partnerships maybe with affiliates and you all just agree to like, share, or comment on each other's posts. Because what that does is it actually helps engage in with the algorithms, let's say, for example, on Facebook and come to the top of the news feed. So if you've ever seen a post on Facebook that's maybe two years old and then all of a sudden it pops up in your timeline again, it's most likely because somebody has gone and re-commented, which has just kind of brought it back to the forefront. If you're going to cold call, then you can use a formula called CATS. I hated cold calling before. So when I started using this, I was never cold calling again. So CAT stands for Compliment, Attract, Takeaway, and Schedule. When you do this, you're building 
a relationship, right? And you always want to end the phone call with either scheduling the next phone call or a face-to-face -face appointment. You have to have a takeaway from that. So in looking at that, look at the different buckets, the different affiliates that you want to partner up with. This could be other builders, investors, attorneys, probate uh, attorneys, believe it or not, even locksmith we've gotten some deals from. So whatever that is for you, just focus on a few and continue to nurture those relationships. So in looking at your ROI, your return on investment, what is your average cost per lead? We have to track this, especially when we're doing ad spend and, you know, lead generation is purely a numbers game. So we need to be looking at what our average cost per lead is. How many leads are you closing? Okay, so again, looking at your closing ratio, how many appointments are you closing? Okay, so how many appointments are you going on and how many of those appointments are you actually turning in to closed deals? Money in the bank. For example, if you're spending $1,000 a month for 100 leads, then your cost per lead is $10. Okay. If you have a 3% conversion rate, that is three closed deals per month. So you know if you're going to spend $1,000, you should have three closed deals a month. So as we mentioned in the example earlier, at a $200,000 sales price at 3% commission, let's say your average commission is $6,000, just for the sake of example. And you multiply that by three closings, then you know you're going to have a GCI of $18,000 a month. So that $18,000 is your return on your $1,000 initial investment. Leverage. So when you know what your hourly worth is, it now becomes easier to leverage and hire out uh, instead of, of, of not, <laughs> which is something that I struggled with for a long time. So if you're Commission on average is $18,000 a month. And let's say you just work 160 hours a month. So that's just on a 40 hour work week. Then your hourly worth is $112. Okay. So if you're worth $112, shouldn't you be delegating the $10 an hour activities? Okay. That could be through an assistant. You don't have to hire a full-time assistant. You could get a virtual assistant or simply using, you know, different websites that will do activities and different projects for you. But if you're worth $112 an hour, you shouldn't be doing those activities that are closer to the $10 mark. Activities can include showing assistance, data entry, contract entry, marketing, appointment setting, the list goes on and on and on. Of course, check with your local compliance broker. It varies from state to state on what, you know, non-licensees versus what licensees can do. Make your systems duplicatable, okay? If you're running a team or do hire a full-time assistant, create a team manual for you and your agents or even your assistant. Make sure that somebody can look at that manual and be able to know exactly what you want done. So make it duplicatable. You don't need to be involved in every little step because that's the whole point of leveraging other, other talent. Time blocking, consistency matters. We talked about consistency earlier. So you can either create a time block schedule or you can create a task list for the day and then prioritize it. I don't care which one you do, just make sure that you're doing one of these two. And then I would encourage you to get the most boring task completed first. And here's why. If you don't get the boring task completed first, then they're going to mentally drain you and they're going to drag you all day. If you get those tasks done first thing in the morning, then you're going to feel good for the rest of the day. And like you are on fire, you're on a roll. So I often will do the things that I dread the most first thing in the morning. Make your prospecting calls. Uh, a suggested read is Fanatical Prospecting. It's a great read. And then, of course, uh, for conversion, uh, there's the conversion code. That's also a great read. Block out time, believe it or not, to think and reflect. I know this sounds silly, and uh, I'm not one to um, ne necessarily uh, meditate, but I do take time to think because you need to constantly be reevaluating your business and asking yourself, can it be better? The worst enemy of success is not continuing to grow. So a lot of, of us can start achieving some success, and then we just stay there because we've become complacent and we're not taking time to reevaluate our business. Consistency matters. So not doing an activity today, ask yourself, if I don't do this today, 
how many months behind could this put me? Okay, because this one thing could just snowball into other things and how far behind could it put me? And oftentimes when agents come up to me and they're frustrated and they don't have any business, I will ask them, what did you do 90 days ago? Okay, so if an agent comes up to me today and I said, what did you do 90 days ago? Which would have been around summertime. Well, I took the summer off, I had fun. Okay, so what you're benefiting today or lack thereof is from the work that you did 90 days ago. So you always need to be looking 90 days ahead and that will get you off the real estate roller coaster or the hamster wheel that I like to call it. You, you get some, some deals and then it dips and then it gets some deals. If you're constantly working in 90 day cycles, then you'll keep your business rolling. Budgeting, what expenses can I expect? I mean, if you've got your income, that's gonna be your buyers, your sellers, uh, referrals that come in, leases, um, you know, other agents, however you do that. What expenses can you expect from that? So again, cost of sale, those are referral fees, listing buyers, agent split, brokerage fees, expenses and marketing, lead generation, your car, supplies, dues, technology, your insurance, a virtual assistant if you're hiring out, salaries, education, mentoring, and a coach. We always need to have that, by the way. Um, and for listing, staging, and photography, etc. What is going out to to uh, run your business? So make sure that you're paying attention to all of these things. I encourage you to go ahead and download um, the one sheet business plan, and I want you to fill it out, have it on your desk review it from time to time and make sure that you're staying on track every single day. And I'm going to end with this. One of the most important meetings that I always talk about, you probably heard me say it before if you follow my work, is the most important important meeting of the day is one that I have with my husband every single morning. We drink coffee after our kids go to, to school and we just take half an hour and we talk about our goal and that may sound super repetitive but what it does is truly keeps both of us on track not just to make sure that we're achieving those goals but to make sure that our personal and our professional goals are in line with not only ourselves but with one another which I think is really important so with that said your homework is to go finish your goal setting sheet if you have questions, here's my information. I hope you reach out to me. Uh, and then, of course, you know, I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, and, of course, YouTube. So I hope you go and follow me. And uh, this was beneficial. Thank you so much.